Welcome to Sato Carry 2.0 Online Nursing Channel. In today's video, we are going to see mock test series. This is weekend edition. So these questions are very useful for those who are writing RRB staff nurse exam, MRB Tamil Nadu staff nurse exam, Nimhans nursing officer exam, Jitma nursing officer exam, Rotak PGI nursing officer exam, Baba Farid University, Farid Court nursing officer exam. Also, it is very helpful for those who are going to give CHO staff nurse exams in 2019. So before seeing this video, please subscribe to our channel to get latest notification. Please click the bell icon. Let's see the first question of the day. When turning on a mobile bedridden client without assistance, which action by the nurse best ensures client safety? Option A, securely grabs the client's arm and leg. B, put bed rails on the side of bed opposite from the nurse. Option C, correctly position and use a turn sheet. Option D, lower the head of the client's bed slowly. The right answer here, option B, put bed rails up on the side of the bed opposite from the nurse. This action will help the patient from preventing the falls. Question number two, the nurse is using the Glasgow Coma Scale to perform a neurological assessment. A common uh, client winces and pulls away from a painful stimulus. Which action, uh, which action uh, should the nurse take next? Option A, document that the response to the pain stimulation. Option B, observe the client response to verbal stimulation. Option C, place the client on seizure precaution for 24 hours. Option D, report decorticate posturing to the physician. The right answer, option A, document that the client responds to painful stimulus. The rational here, the client has demonstrated a purposeful response to pain, which should be documented as such. Response to painful stimulus is assessed after response to verbal stimulus, not before. There is no indication for placing the client on seizure precaution. Reporting decorticate posturing to the healthcare provider is non-purposeful movement. So option A is right here. Question number three. The nurse identifies the potential for infection in a client with partial thickness second degree and full thickness third degree burns. What intervention has the highest priority in decreasing the client's risk of infection? Option A, administration of plasma expanders. B, use of handful uh, hand washing techniques. Option C, application of topical antibacterial cream. Option D, limiting visitors to client with burns. So in this case, the most highest priority nursing intervention to decrease the client risk of infection will be option B use of careful hand washing techniques. We all know very well that is the preliminary nursing action to prevent any kind of infection. Question number four, a type of illness characterized by periods of remission and exacerbation. Option A acute B chronic, C subacute, D subchronic. The right answer is Option B, chronic. Question number five. A nurse performs the following techniques when assessing a patient. Which assessment uses the technique of percussion? Option A, pressing down on the symphysis pubis to determine the presence of urinary retention. Question number, uh, sorry, option B, placing a stethoscope on the abdomen to assess the extent of bowel sounds. Option C, using a rubber tip hammer to elicit a deep tendon reflex. D, touching the skin over an artery to obtain a pulse rate. The right answer is, in percussion, we use a rubber tip hammer to elicit a deep tendon reflex is considered as a technique of percussion here. Question number six, a nurse identifies that a patient may have perceived constipation. What specific question related to perceived constipation should the nurse ask the client? Option A, how often do you take a laxative? 
option b what is the consistency of your stools c do you have a sensation of rectal fullness d when was the last time you had a bowel movement so the right answer here the nurse should question a client how often do you take laxatives when the patient have perceived constipation question number seven a nurse is providing passive range of motion exercise which principles is important option a increase the speed of the exercise progressively and according to the patient's tolerance option b assess the patients to complete all planes of movement when the patient is unable to do so option c support above and below the joints being exercise option d repeat each movement 10 times so the right principle in range of movement range of motion exercise would be option c support above and below the joint while being exercise question number eight which of the following is not true with regards to the concept of modern stress theory option a stress is not a nervous energy b man whenever he encounters stress is always adapt to it option c stress is not always something to be avoided option d stress does not always lead to distress so according to modern stress theory the concept which is not true here is man whenever he encounters stresses always adapts to it sometimes they can maladapt to the stress so this statement is not true according to modern stress theory question number nine an older adult is living in a nursing home because of multiple chronic health problems which nursing action is most appropriate to assist the older adult to achieve the task associated with erickson stage of integrity versus despair option a encourage the patient in social activities option b encourage the patient to reminiscence option c provide the patient with opportunities to make choices and d teach the patient the importance of balancing exercise rest and sleep so according to this four the right answer will be option c provide the patients with opportunity to make choices so when they make their own choices the client at the old age gets the integrity when they are not able to take their own choices they go for despair question number 10 the nurse is monitoring a child with burns during treatment for burn shock which assessment provides the most accurate guide to determine the adequacy of fluid resuscitation option a skin turgor b level of edema at burn site option c adequacy of capillary filling option d amount of fluid tolerated in 24 hours so which assessment provides the most accurate guide to determine adequacy of fluid resuscitation the right answer will be adequacy of capillary filling ensures that the child is having adequate fluid in her body question number 11 patients with prolonged neutropenia lasting more than 10 days are at risk for which infection option a herpes simplex reactivation b pneumocyte cystitis corny infection option c oral candida infection d tuberculosis the right answer is option b pneumocystis corny infection question number 12 symptoms that may be experienced by patient in diabetic coma are a sweating hunger and trembling b pallor headache and weakness c slow pulse and difficulty in breathing option d fruity breath odor nausea and vomiting so in diabetic coma the patient will have the symptoms of fruity breath odor nausea as well as vomiting now move on to question number 13 while assessing a client during peritoneal dialysis the drainage of the dialysate 
from the peritoneal cavity has ceased before the record volume has returned. The priority action should be instructing the patient to option A, drink a glass of water, B, turn from side to side, B, deep breath and cough, D, rotate the catheter periodically. So the best, the priority nursing action when the dialysate from the peritoneal cavity stop before the record volume should reach outside is turn from side to side, make the patient to move in the bed from one side to another side. Due to gravity, the fluid will start, comes outside from the peritoneal cavity. Question number 14. Progressive increase of blood urea nitrogen indicates A. Cirrhosis of liver B. Dehydration C. Renal failure D. Hyperthyroidism The right answer is renal failure. Question number 15. A common blood test is that is used in a urologic workup is a blood urea nitrogen test. The normal level for this test is A. 10 to 20 milligram per 100 ml of whole blood. Option B, 25 to 40 milligram per 100 ml of whole blood. Option C, 50 to 80 milligram per 100 ml of whole blood. Option D, 70 to 120 milligram per 100 ml of whole blood. The right answer is option A, the normal blood urea nitrogen level is 10 to 20 milligram per 100 ml of whole blood. Question number 16. The diet regimen for a child with acute glomerulonephritis is A. Low sodium, low calorie. B. Low potassium, low protein. C. Low sodium, low protein. D. Low calcium and low potassium. So here in acute glomerulonephritis, the client should be prescribed a diet which contains low sodium, and low protein increased sodium level can lead to increased blood pressure higher concentration of protein may lead to increase the urea level in the child question number 17 the appropriate initial treatment for chemical burn is a lavage with water b neutralize the chemical c apply the prescribed topical agent d wrap the patient in sterile sheets the right answer here, the initial treatment in chemical burn is to clean the area with water, that is lavage with water. Question number 18, the disease of athletes food is caused by A. Bacteria, B. Fungi, C. Protozoa, D. Nematode. Athletic food is caused mainly by fungi. Option B is right. Question number 19. Aqueous humor is produced in A. Subarachnoid space of the meninges B. The lateral ventricles C. The choroids D. The ciliary body We all know very well the aqueous humor The site of production is the ciliary body Option D is right 20th question A 6 year old child with diagnosis of chlamydial conjunctivitis Admitted in the ward Based on this diagnosis the nurse determines that which of the following further investigation is requires. Option A, possible trauma. B, possible sexual abuse. C, presence of an allergy. D, presence of a respiratory infection. So when there is chlamydial conjunctivitis, the nurse should suspect for possible sexual abuse because chlamydial inject, uh, infection can be occur through sexual mode of contact. So there is chance for sexual abuse. Question number 21. Nursing assessment in an infant with gastroenteritis should be directed towards uh, detecting which potential problem? A. Urinary retention. B. Heart failure. C. Electrolyte imbalance. And D. Hyperactive reflexes. So in gastroenteritis in infant, the potential problem is related to option C, electrolyte imbalance. Move on to question number 22. What 
part of the heart delivers richly oxygenated blood to the body option a tricuspid valve b superior vena cava c aorta d pulmonary artery the part of the heart which supplies rich oxygenated blood to the body is option c aorta question number 23 you are providing a cat to a patient with pericarditis which of the following is not a proper nursing intervention for this patient option a monitor the patient for the complication of cardiac tamponade b administer brufen as scheduled option c place the patient in a supine position to relieve pain option d monitor the patient for pulses paradoxicus so the intervention which is not proper in a client with pericarditis will be option c place the patient in a supine position which can relieve pain when you place the patient in supine pain will increase it won't decrease question number 24 the disorder in which leukocytosis is commonly found except option a pyrexia infection b typhoid c leukemia d pregnancy in pregnancy in this condition there is no chance of increased leukocyte so option d is right question number 25 during you uh, when you during you uh, musculoskeletal assessment of the client you determine that the client has muscular strength against gravity but against but not against resistance there is muscular strength against the gravity but not against resistance you would document this assessment as option a one on the scale of one to three option b two on the scale of one to five option c three on the scale of zero to five option d four on the scale of zero to five so when you assess muscle strength you note that patient resistance is against gravity but not against resistance then you will document the finding as option c three on the scale of zero to five so here you have the gravy how to grade when you assess the muscular strength in a scale of zero to five so when you when you score three the muscular movement is against gravity but not against resistance so hence we will give number three in the zero to five scale question number 26 what are the small bones that extend beyond small bones in the wrist and make up the lower portion of the hand a metacarpals b metatarsals c corpus d tarsals so in hand in the wrist the small bones beyond the wrist is called metacarpals but in case of leg it will be metatarsals question number 27 what another word for superior what is the another word for superior a central sorry ventral b dorsal c cranial d internal the another word for superior is the right answer is cranial superior head cranial question number 28 heparin is an anticoagulant what family of anticoagulant medication does this drug belongs to option a direct thrombin inhibitor b indirect thrombin inhibitors c vitamin k antagonist d factor 10 a inhibitors heparin as the anticoagulant it belongs to the family indirect in indirect thrombin inhibitors indirect thrombin inhibitor example is heparin question number 29 everything below is a part of the lower respiratory system except select all that apply a trachea b carina c pharynx d bronchioles and e nasal cavities so go down except everything below is a part of lower respiratory system except so except means the upper part of 
the respiratory system includes pharynx and nasal cavities which is not comes under the lower part of respiratory system now let's see the 30th question snellens chart is read from a distance of a 6 feet b 14 feet c 20 feet d 24 feet you know very well the distance in which we sit away from the snellens chart is option c 20 feet distance should be there question number 31 true about dying declaration is a more important than dying deposition option b can be taken presence in of magistrate only option c taken in presence of two witness d has to be taken under oath so dying declaration is always taken in presence of two witness magistrate is not always possible to come so any two witness presence is important when you take a dying declaration question number 32 zinc deficiency is characterized by all except a poor vision b diarrhea c hypertension d hypogonadism zinc deficiency can also cause night blindness it is commonly causing gastrointestinal disturbance like diarrhea hypogonadism is one of the clinical uh, future of zinc deficiency so option c hypertension is not due to zinc deficiency question number 33 the hypofunction of the anterior pituitary gland that rarely affect the posterior lobe leading to a simon's disease b Froelich syndrome c graves disease d levy syndrome the right answer the hypofunction of the anterior pituitary gland is simon's disease that rarely affect the posterior lobe but mostly it is affecting the anterior pituitary gland and leads to hypo decreased secretion of hormones question number 34 the effect of antidiuretic hormone is a anuria b increased urine output c oliguria d decreased urine output so we know very well antidiuretic hormone decreases the urine output question number 35 a high concentration of estrogen in the blood causes a vaginal dryness b unstable blood sugar levels c frequent urination d osteoporosis so high concentration of estrogen usually in causes blood sugar level in a uh, unstable so option b is right so increased estrogen level leads to unstable blood sugar level question number 36 the pain management nurse observes a patient with complex regional pain syndrome who is not wearing the right side jacket sleeve the patient responds uh, intense right arm pain upon light touch the nurse recognizes this pain as a allodynia b hypoalgesia c neuritis d paresthesia so you have to note down there is a regional pain syndrome in which the patient having intense pain for light touch so that means it should be allodynia allodynia is associated with impairment in the nerve in which there is increased pain due to light stimulus so option a allodynia is right question number 37 is a distinguish a distinguishing feature of a cluster headache is that it occurs a distinguishing feature of a cluster headache is that occur, that it occurs a bilaterally b globally c occipitally d unilaterally cluster headaches usually occur at night time when you sleep that time it mainly intensify on one side that is unilaterally option d is right question number 38 
which non pharmacologic intervention is difficult to use with older adults who are cognitively impaired a aroma therapy b distraction c guided imagery d heat application so the non pharmacologic intervention which is very difficult to use in older adult who is cognitively impaired who does not have thinking ability that is option a aroma therapy b distraction c guided imagery d heat application so here guided imagery is very difficult to use in older adult who have impairment in cognition so guided imagery needs good thinking imaginary ability so when it is not there we cannot use it question number 39 biofeedback is a therapy used to a develop psychophysiologic self regulation b enhance drug delivery c increase release of serotonin d promote neuronal regeneration so biofeedback the therapy mainly used for which purpose so the basic principle in this is it used to develop psychophysiologic self regulation that is biofeedback so through biofeedback we our self get aware as about the changes in our mind body functions so that is the main purpose of using biofeedback question number 40 A 12-year-old oncology patient who is receiving in-home care without IV access needs medication for breakthrough pain. The pain management of nurses' most effective route of administration is recommended. Option A: intranasal, B: nebulization, C: oral oral transmucosal, D: transdermal. So when a 12 year old oncology client who don't want to take pain medication through iv then the best method the nurse must use is administration of this analgesic drug through oral transmucosal route question number 41 the family nurse practitioner participate in a hospital based quality improvement project the nurse practitioner reviews four charts per month of a nurse practitioner colleague to ensure diabetes protocols are met this process is a risk analysis b peer review c forced field analysis d core competency so here the clue is given here so assessment is done in a nurse practitioner colleague by another nurse practitioner so then it will be option b peer review question number 42 during cardiac auscultation a soft first heart sound with hollow systolic apical murmur that radiates to the left axilla suggest a aortic stenosis b mitral regurgitation c mitral stenosis d mitral wall prolapse so here note down soft first heart sound with hollow systolic apical murmur so keep this in mind and that will be characters which are mitral wall regurgitation in mitral wall regurgitation when you auscultate you can hear a soft first heart sound with a hollow systolic apical murmur that may be radiates to the left axilla question number 43 A patient who had a total gastrectomy one year ago complains of a sore mouth, indigestion, and tingling in the lower extremities. Which test is ordered by the family nurse practitioner? A. Complete blood count. B. Blood urea nitrogen level. C. Liver function test. D. Thyroid function test. The right answer is complete blood count. Is the preliminary assessment the family nurse must. make the client to undergo question number 44 treatment of viral conjunctivitis includes the use of a steroid eye drops b antihistamine drops c antihistamine decongestant drops d cold compresses the viral conjunctivitis is treated by means of cold compress that is the best method to treat viral conjunctivitis 
question number 45 which health promotion strategy is most appropriate for adolescents who are obese a individual based behavior modification b motivational interviewing c parents should regulate meals d presenting video case studies the right answer is the best promotion strategy which is more appropriate for adolescent who is obese is motivational interviewing when you speak one time it is not effective so repeatedly you have a communication uh, with the client and use motivational techniques that will give you a good result question number 46 routine immunization guidelines recommender administering the hepatitis b vaccine at birth and repeating doses at a one month and six months b one month and two months c four months and two years d six months and 12 months so hepatitis b vaccine which is administered at birth and it is followed at one month and six month period of time question number 47 a 38 year old patient who is Nepali tells the family nurse practitioner that his or her parent died in his or her 40s from liver cancer. The nurse practitioner assesses that the patient is at the risk for A. Hepatitis B, B. Malaria, C. Tularemia, D. Tyrosinemia. So the nurse must look for hepatitis B in the assessment because the history suggests their parents has died because of liver cancer. Question number 48. What is the main reason for administering a progestational medication to perimenopausal women who use estrogen? Option A. Preventing hot flashes. B. Preventing osteoporosis. C. Promote the growth of the uterine lining D decrease the risk of endometrial hyperplasia so the right answer why we administer progestational medication in a perimenopausal woman who is already using estrogen therapy the right answer is it decreases the risk of endometrial hyperplasia when you administer progestational medication that decreases the risk of getting endometrial hyperplasia 49th which drug is associated with increased lipoprotein level a fruzimide b hydrochlorothiazide c spironolactone d triametrine the drug which is associated with increased blood uh, lipoprotein is hydrochlorothiazide it is a uh, drug which is covered by fat so that can increase the protein uh, lipoprotein level further question number 15 you are caring for a post-operative client who is complaining of abdominal distension and flatness which intervention would you most likely do for this client so a post-operative client who is having abdominal distension and flatness the best intervention which you will do for this client option a a cleansing enema b a retention enema c a return flow enema d a lax factor so commonly we give carminative enema and a type of carminative enema is a return flow enema which reduces the abdominal distension and relieves the flatus so this is the intervention mostly we give for the client in a post-operative period who complains abdominal distension and flatus. So here we come to the end of 50 questions in this video. And now we have the challenging question. This question is for our subscribers to motivate our, our subscriber to refer and give the correct answer. Please write the right answer in the comment box below. And now the question is, you are caring for a client whose pressure ulcer is yellow. Which treatment you will most likely employ for this wound a a barrier film b an alginate dressing c surgical laser debridement d autolytic debridement 
So question number 15. There is no answer here. I will give you the answer. You give your answer in the comment box. I will give you the answer with the rational. Now end of part 1. Very soon you will have the part 2 mock test series of this week. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to Carry 2.0 online nursing channel and stay with us for another good video with another 50 questions. Thank you. Bye bye.